So consider two lines in two-dimensional space. If you do that, you only really have uh, three options, I guess. They could be parallel, in which case they will never touch. Or they could intersect like this and have an intersection point. There is another third option here. The two lines could be identical. And if the two lines were identical, then they would have an infinite number of intersection points. So zero intersection points, one intersection point, and infinity intersection points. But what happens if you're in three-dimensional space? Now, in three-dimensional space, you have another fourth option, and that is what's called skew lines. Now, skew lines are just a line and another line that never touch. Now, these two lines are not parallel, right? One's going that way and one's going that way. But because we're in three-dimensional space, there's more freedom. So two lines that aren't parallel could still, in three-dimensional space, not touch. So to make sure that you've got all of your language, 2D and 3D lines can both be parallel. 2D and 3D lines can intersect at a single point. 2D and 3D lines can coincide, be on top of each other. And only 3D lines can be called skew. Two non-parallel lines that never intersect. Now, finding the intersection point of 2D vector equations, you've done before. So if you want to know where these two vector equations meet, just get them in terms of i and j components. Now, these two vector equations are going to meet where 2 plus um, lambda equals 3 mu and 2 minus lambda equals negative 1 plus 2 mu. In other words, when the i components are equal to each other and the j components are equal to each other. Here I am equating my i components and my i components and my j components and my j components. I can solve this simultaneously for lambda and mu. Now that spits out values of 1 and 1 for lambda and mu, and I can now sub that into either r1 and r2, and I'll know the coordinates where that occurs. So I'm going to sub it into r2. Now that was relatively straightforward, I now know that the point of intersection, or the position vector where these two vector equations intersect, is 3i plus j. And I can apply exactly the same reason when I, uh, reasoning when I move into three dimensions. So I have two vector equations, we're going to find the intersection of them. First I need to get these in terms of i, j, and k components, expanding. Now once I do that, the i components and the j components and the k components can all be equated. So now I have three equations, and you might be worried here because you're thinking three equations, now I need to do simultaneous equations with three equations. But actually, we have three equations and only two variables. So actually, we only have to do simultaneous equations with two of them, and then check that that solution also works in the third. So I've solved one and two simultaneously, and I get an answer of x equals negative two and mu equals, sorry, if lambda equals negative two and mu equals four. Now I just need to check that that works in equation 3. Now I've checked it and it does work in equation 3. You can see that subbing negative 2 in here and subbing uh, 4 in here will give us negative 2 equals negative 2. I'm not finished yet because I need to find the intersection. I just need to sub in negative 2 and 4 into one of those equations. Now when I sub those two values into R1, it spits out i plus 0j, you don't really need to put that in there, minus 2k. So I can say that the intersection point of these three lines is 1, 0, negative 2. Of those two lines is 1, 0, negative 2. But what if they didn't intersect? What if they were skew lines? So in this one, I'm trying to prove that R1 and R2 are skew lines, as in they never meet. They pass by each other like this. Now, if they pass by each other like that, that means their i, j, and k components will never be the same. So I can do what I've done before, which is make my i, j, and k components in my equations, and then equate all three of them. So I've got my three equations set up, and just be careful, understand what's happening here. This is the i component of R1, this is the i component of R2, the j component of R1, and the j component of R2. Now when I solve these simultaneously, what I'm getting is a value for lambda and a value for mu, which will make the i and the j components the same for both R1 and R2. So you can imagine that R1 and R2 are the same if you look down, they're crossing over if you look down from them from top and bottom, but perhaps they're not 
at the same level. They're two planes flying over each other, and that's where they cross, but one might be higher and one might be lower. So let's solve one and two simultaneously and see what values for lambda and mu create that moment when the planes are passing over each other. All right, so the planes are passing over each other when lambda is one and mu is zero. Now, if I sub one and zero in to uh, this equation and the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then that means that the planes K components are the same as well and they're gonna smash into each other. If they're not the same, that means that they're passing over each other because their J components are different when their, um, sorry, their K components are different when their I and J components are the same. All right, I did it, I put it in there. Uh, we end up with five being equal to zero. Five does not equal zero. Therefore, the left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side. Therefore, these two lines are skewed. Now, what if I wanted to find the, two, the angle between two lines? Now, we're talking about vectors, we're talking about angle between, which means that you need to recall that your dot product is magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cos theta, and you can rearrange that to find the angle. All right, so here are my two lines here, two three-dimensional lines, um, and you can remember that this is the starting position, this is the starting position, and this is the directions that the lines are traveling in. And if we're gonna find the angle between two lines, we really just need to consider the direction that one's traveling in and the direction that the other's traveling in. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but wait a minute, maybe these are skew lines, Maybe they never meet. Well, it actually doesn't matter. If, a, if two lines are skew, that is, they never meet, we can still find the angle between them by imagining that one gets shifted down and then we find the angle between those two. All right, so all we need to do is treat this as a vector, treat this as another vector, because they're the directions that we're traveling in, and find the angle between them. And all we need to do is follow a dot product procedure, which you have done heaps before. Now, because this is R1 and R2, I'll treat the directions as direction one and direction two, and all I need to do is multiply the i, j, and k components together. All right, so i components together, j components together, k components together, boom! d1 dot d2 is negative 11. And now I just need to deal with this formula here. Uh, now, I am going to need magnitudes of this and this, but that's relatively straightforward as well. So both have magnitudes of root 38, uh, and now I can put it in for this formula here. So now we can say that theta equals cos to the negative 1 of a dot b over magnitude a magnitude b. Now, all of that is going to be equal to cos negative 1 of negative 11 over root 38 times root 38, which is cos to the negative 1 of negative 11 on uh, root 38 times root 38 is 38. And that is going to be my value for theta. Now, your calculator is going to spit out an angle between them of 106.82, but they're two lines, right? And if there's an angle between the two lines of 106.82, that means there is another acute angle between them, which would be 180 minus that. So the actual angle between them is 73.17 degree. All right, we've covered a lot here. We've looked at the intersection of 2D and 3D lines. We've looked at skew lines, and we've looked at the angles between them. Heaps there, but it's stuff that you feeling pretty comfortable with because it's stuff that you've done before.